Let's talk about the starters surprisingly potentially playing in Saturday's preseason finale. Mahomes and Andy Reid both speaking about the Chris Jones holdout, as well as a former agent weighing in on how that holdout could negatively affect Chris Jones financially even next season. But first, how about those? All right, first up, practice today was a Friday-style workout that involved a special teams period and an emphasis on red zone work and reviewing other game situations. And the injury report is still pretty much the same with the players who didn't practice today being offensive lineman Nick Allegretti, who hurt his shoulder during a practice last week, defensive tackle Matt Dickerson, who suffered a turf toe injury in the last preseason game against the Cardinals, cornerback Nick Jones fractured a couple of fingers in the first preseason game against the Saints, wide receiver Nico Romijio dislocated his shoulder shoulder last week at practice. Kadarius Tony is still nursing that knee back to health after a cleanup he had on it. Legereus Sneed is still out dealing with knee inflammation and has been out since the end of July. And then some good news here. Turk Wharton is back out there practicing, moving around well and looking quick per the words of Andy Reid. Therefore, Andy also said he may play this Saturday against the Cleveland Stains. They just need to monitor him now that the knee swelling has subsided and see how he does. They are also treating Isaiah Pacheco the same way as he shed his yellow no contact jersey earlier this week and are taking things day to day to see if he's going to get any playing time this Saturday. And speaking of Saturday's game, Andy noted that the ones might actually get a bit of playing time, then the twos and threes will take it from there. And while Patrick and some of the starters don't typically play during this third game, Mahomes said he follows Coach Reed's lead. So if Andy wants him to play this week, he's going to go out there with the goal of executing at a high level. He actually wants to keep improving and building with the offense and use that momentum to help propel them into week one. But before I get too far ahead of myself here, I need to mention that the only new addition to the injury report is defensive end George Karloftis, who was out yesterday as well as today. He was dealing with some stomach issues of sort, and so I'm not currently sure if George is going to play on Saturday, though Andy made it seem pretty minor and said he should be good to go here soon. Something else that I hope is good to go here soon is defensive tackle Chris Jones and his return. And unless you live under a rock, you know that he's still holding out during these contract negotiations or the lack thereof. We'll get there in a moment, but he missed all of training camp and on top of that has been relatively active on social media during this holdout, even though last year he said this regarding players interacting with fans online. Stay off of Twitter, bro. Forget it. That's how social media is these days, man. You know, a lot of us have platforms and those gigs that we get on and uh, we interact with fans and sometimes it can turn ugly and it can take a love turn. So for me personally, I just stay off of social media, especially during this time, you know, especially engaging with fans that, you know, either dislike you or dislike you for a play you did this year or dislike you for a play you did last game. They'll live with it. We, we'll Pick it up next game. We will talk about it later. Well, well, well. A lot can change in nine months, I guess. I mean, if a woman can grow a baby inside of her belly and birth it out in that amount of time, I guess a man can change his mind about interacting with fans on social media because he's been doing it quite a bit and seeming to enjoy it. Anyway, I talked about this in much greater detail in yesterday's video, so check that out right here if you haven't already. But Chris Jones basically said he would be willing to hold out until week eight of the regular season and has the financial means to be able to do so. However, Joel Corey, a former sports agent and NFL contracts and salary cap expert, said that each week Chris Jones holds out during the regular season would actually impact his franchise tag amount next season. That's if a long-term deal didn't get done and the Chiefs opted to tag him next year. And since it's the second time they've tagged him, it's going to be 120% of the prior year's salary. So if he missed as much as seven weeks this year, as he alluded to recently on Twitter, his franchise tag would be somewhere around the $24 million mark depending on a couple of incentives and if he hit them. Therefore, Chris Jones holding out like that does have greater implications for him down the road than just this season, which only adds to the belief, or at least my belief, that Chris Jones will indeed return sooner rather than later, even if a new deal doesn't get done. Andy Reid himself was asked today if the Chiefs were expecting to start the season without Chris at this point in time, and he replied saying, I mean, There's been no communication, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, what's going to go there, but whatever happens, happens. I mean, not there. The game goes on, right? So that's how it works. And when asked if there was any way that Andy could get involved in this to help the process along, he didn't make it seem very likely. Um, no, not right now there's not. Yeah, they got to communicate and do their thing, and there's just been no communication, so. And part of me doesn't understand the response here. Quote, there's been no communication. 
How? I mean, can't the Chiefs maybe attempt to communicate once again with Chris Jones or maybe they have and Chris Jones and his representation have simply ghosted them? I mean, I could see the Chiefs offering a deal, Chris Jones and his team looking at it laughing and then saying that is not even worthy of a response and therefore they just stop communicating until something better is offered. However, that doesn't seem very professional and hopefully it's not as petty as that. Either way, we will never fully know all these details and things are the way they are. The D-line is working their tail off and Coach Reed said he appreciates that, saying that Chris isn't here and it's basically the next man up mentality. He then said they're pretty much treating this situation the same way they would as if a player got injured. When that happens, they aren't out there and you just gotta keep rolling. Big Red then shouted out Mike Dana saying he's done a nice job at stepping up in the meantime, as has George Karloftis heading into year two, noting he's a lot stronger than he was last year. Let's be real though, the line is not gonna be the same if Chris Jones isn't out there, but let's keep it moving because Patrick Mahomes was also asked about Chris Jones and Mahomes said that Chris is a once in a lifetime type of player, but you have to trust the entire defense just like you have to trust the entire offense and he basically means this he himself has been out before chad henney stepped up the whole offense stepped up Trav has been out before and others had to step up and that's the way it goes. Players have to respond when their numbers are called upon. However, Mahomes made it clear there's no love lost between Chris and his teammates. Chris is an incredible athlete and while it was a bit unexpected for Chris to still be holding out, he lets those guys simply handle their business accordingly. I do know he's not here. Mm -hmm. Are you expecting to start the season without him? No, not not necessarily. I mean, I uh, I know that stuff, contract stuff is hard to talk about because everybody wants to make money for their entire family and and everything like that, but I know how much Chris Chris loves the Chiefs. He loves being a part of this organization. I just try to stay out of it and just tell Chris that I love him and that whenever he does come back, he'll, he'll be welcome with open arms. And uh, we know that he's preparing himself so that whenever he does get back, he can be that dominant player that he always has been. I don't think anyone expected him not to be here now, but uh, that's part of the contract negotiation stuff. So, I mean, I'm not looking down on him for anything like that. Uh, he has stuff that he's trying to get done that he feels like he needs to, to get done right now. And so I, I respect his decision. And then whenever he gets back, like I said, we open him with, with open arms and uh, he's a vital part of this organization. And so I'm, I'm glad that he's on my team. He's, he's in good spirits. I mean, he's he's a guy that he loves football. Like I said, he loves playing for the Chiefs. And so this is a, it's a hard time for all players, I think, whenever this stuff comes up. Like I said, it doesn't hurt his relationship with any of us. I mean, we respect his decision. But at the same time, when Whenever he comes back, we'll welcome him with open arms and know that he's going to be a pivotal teammate to help us try to make a run at the Super Bowl again. So there you have it. Mahomes and Andy Reid weigh in on the Chris Jones situation in their own way. Uh, you do wonder, though, if teammates are starting to look around, wondering where the heck this man is. As with each passing day, uh, the season is getting closer, and Chris is not only one of the leaders on the defense, but the centerpiece. Anyway, I'm so tired of this situation, I could literally go into hibernation before talking about it ever again, so let's move on gladly. Andy Reid also spoke on the receiving room saying it'll be a tough decision because everybody is playing well. He mentioned that special teams is a big part of it when it comes to the bottom of the wide receiver depth chart. Quote, you might be a good receiver, but if you can't help out on special teams, you got a problem there. And he actually mentioned the importance of special teams more than once in his presser saying you can't forget to include special teams in there and how we work work with that when it comes to roster cutdowns. It's going to be happening on Tuesday, August 29th, by the way. And that's where the good old Dave Tobe card shling, can be pulled. If Tobe is high enough on a player, sometimes he'll get say on who ends up in some of those position groups based on their special teams play, which is normally like wide receiver five or six or cornerback five or six. You know the deal. Mahomes himself said cut down day is going to be tough and he doesn't follow it too closely because it's hard for him to see guys get cut as this is their livelihood and how they provide for their families. Jane Buchel also spoke to the media today saying cut down day is always a stressful one for a lot of players, but he has a bit of a better feeling about things personally for him this year compared to last. He's grown in his comfort of the offense, has learned a ton from Mahomes and his leadership of the room, and is enjoying joining the competition in the QB room for that number two spot. And speaking of the quarterback room, Andy Reid mentioned they are juggling the whole thing still as there is competition for that two spot. Quote, we haven't finalized anything yet. And even though I do think Gabbert will end up being QB two, this Saturday's preseason finale is a pretty pivotal game for both of these guys to play as well as they can, considering coaches are still evaluating every position group prior to cut down day this week. And I can't completely rule out Shane Buchel being in the running for the backup QB spot behind Mahomes. And with all that being said, you guys gotta let me know your thoughts on the QB room battle. Are you currently Team Buchel or Team Gabbert? 
This feels like a Twilight movie. Uh, and then also let me know if the former agent's thoughts on Chris Jones's holdout and the negative financial impact it'll have will actually cause him to show up sooner rather than later. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.